Yup. This electric train is crossing this bridge without being in contact with the catenary power supply. But how? And why? Here in Coscob, Connecticut, the Northeast Corridor crosses over the Mianus River on a rolling lift-type movable bridge. When the original swing bridge was designed, the decision was made to omit the mechanisms that would allow the catenary to move along with the lift span. Other drawbridges on the corridor do have this capability, but not this one. The Mianus River Bridge creates one of the few gaps in the overhead wires on the entire Northeast Corridor. So, how do trains cross this bridge without power? They coast. As a train approaches the bridge, the engineer has to ensure that their train has reached a minimum speed so it can easily glide through the gap in the wires, unpowered. This isn't much of a concern for Metro North's multiple unit sets, as at least one of the pantographs is usually in contact with the wires even as the train negotiates the gap. But for conventional trains like Amtrak's Northeast Regionals, having only one connection point means that the train operator can't afford to get this wrong. New Haven's electric trains did this for many years with no problem. The pantographs on their engines would only go up so high and then stop. So they would lose contact with the wires in the gap, but then seamlessly reconnect on the other side. However, the Pennsylvania Railroad had sections of catenary that were much higher than the New Haven. When this line became part of Penn Central, some of the Pensy's equipment, including the GG1s, began operating on this line. So when the GG1s reached this gap in the wires, their pantographs would spring up above the level where the wires restarted on the other side. If the GG1 operator neglected to lower the pantograph while crossing the bridge, it would result in a shredded pantograph and likely downed wires when the train reached the other end. This is exactly what happened with the first test run of these engines. Today, these issues have been eliminated. And the only concern is to make sure the train has enough speed to coast all the way through the 107-foot power gap. And speaking of power, Coscob also has another significance in the history of powering the Northeast Corridor. In 1907, when the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad electrified, the technology was still relatively new, and the modern power grid didn't exist in today's familiar form. So, the railroad needed to generate their own power supply, one sufficient enough to move trains over a vast territory in the New York area. This photo shows the Coscob power station in 1977, when it was still in operation. Over its career, the station provided electricity to not only the New Haven, but to part of the New York Central Railroad as well. The coal-fired power plant was decommissioned in 1986. And despite being on the National Register of Historic Places, the plant was demolished in 2001. Today, a beautiful public park is now on the old site, right on the bank of the Mianus River. Coscob is a great location to enjoy a day of rail fanning in a beautiful setting. And you can catch Metro North trains, Amtrak Northeast Regionals, as well as several Acelas. Up next, watch this video taken from another location just a few miles down the line to the south from here. Please click that like button and subscribe to the channel so we can keep the rail fan videos coming.